and a lot of great things happening. Feels good for the Nats, too, coming off a win yesterday. That could have been an awfully rough weekend in Philadelphia. Pedro Martinez is going in to the Hall of Fame late this July. Had some great days for the Red Sox, other ball clubs as well. And, of course, a member of our organization back in Montreal early in his career. Celebrate the season with the American Standard All-Star Sales event. Visit MidAtlanticComfort.com for amazing rebate and financing opportunities. 67% is expected to be up in the 70s today. Pretty dry. Some winds are kicking up a bit. And it was in June of 2012 when the Nats came to Boston and they took Fenway by storm. Steven Strasburg got the whole thing started on Friday night. If I remember right, all the talk was about some kid named Bryce Hoppe. And he had a pretty good series, but the, the pitch he dominated. I mean, first Strasburg, then Gio, even Jordan Zimmerman, who didn't get the win on the last game, was fantastic. And, you know, hey, like I said in the open, that was the series where all the baseball world said, hey, these Nats, they're pretty good this year. They would go on to win just 98 games. That's all. Rice to the deepest part of right center, right next to that 420 mark. Tyler Clippert saved all three games in that series. And the Nats hopped on the plane, went north to Toronto, and just really kept the whole thing going. So the American standard, who's hot? Well, it was the Nats in the sweep of the Sox, June 8, 9, 10, 2012. And then it was on to Rogers Center in Toronto. That was a week to remember. Arguably the greatest week on the road in the history of the Washington Nationals. Bryce Harper, or Hoppe, as he's known up here. And I, I got to say something about the Red Sox fans. During the entire long introduction of the Nationals, all their personnel, they were polite, they were professional, they were appreciative. Yeah, I heard Bryce get a few smattered boos, but the cheers out shown that. And these folks at Fenway, who've known their baseball as well as anybody in the game for so many years, very gracious toward our ball club, and we appreciate that. First pitch, Super Bowl champion, Tom Brady. In fact, he walked in with a couple of teammates and Robert Kraft. They all had their trophies. He buried one in the dirt, but David Ortiz able to pick it. Should have thrown the Lombardi trophy. That would have been way better. How cool is that? Tom Brady in the house throwing the first pitch. Feels like the whole baseball world is here today. What a buzz at this ballpark. 68 degrees, sunny, opening day, Fenway Park. Somebody pinch me. By the way, you have a story about meeting a young Tom Brady a long, long time ago when he was a little unsure of what his future might be. He signed with the Expos, and when I was in Montreal, John Hughes was the scout. They brought him to Candlestick Park, and he shadowed me for the day. He was 18 years old, a freshman at the University of Michigan, and the object of the trip was to get him to sign with the Expos. He hit a home run in batting practice. We all had him in the clubhouse afterwards, and he was a quarterback at the University of Michigan. And instead of telling him to sign with the Expos, we said, go play football at Michigan. What are you thinking? You want to sit on a bus for eight hours and make 750 bucks a month? The Boston Globe got a hold of that story around the Super Bowl. They ran it. So in a roundabout sort of way, we didn't know it was Tom Brady back then. He was just a kid. But yeah. we convinced him to play football <laughs> instead of baseball. Yeah, he's Tom Brady now, even if he wasn't back then. Great to see Jason Worth back in the lineup. They're going to. D.H. Clint Robinson today here at Fenway and we were told because of all the ceremonies and the flyover and Pedro Martinez coming out on the field that it would be a late start today. Fenway is interesting on days like this because years and years ago there's Bob Tannenbaum. Learner family represented Marla's here today. There's Mike Rizzo. Got a good contingent up here rooting for the Nats. But on these three o'clock games or maybe 315 as this one might turn out to be. From a scheduled 305 start. They remodeled. Look at the big height of the press box to the left there. That was totally new when they renovated Fenway Park, I don't know, decade and a half ago, maybe 20 years ago. And it really creates some hard hitting situations for the batters at this time of the day because that shadow will be creeping right from the first pitch. Here come the Red Sox led on the field by Rick Porcello, the former Tiger. Who's facing the Nationals for the first time? The crazy dimensions only 310 down the line, 420 out there in right center. And here's the Nats lineup hitting a buck 94. Clint Robinson has gone four for six, a double in RBI. He will be in the number six spot 
behind Ryan Zimmerman. Jason Worth bumps everybody down by becoming the cleanup man today. But Clint, four for ten overall with an RBI. Danny Espinosa in there. Jose Lobatone in there. And against Rick Porcello, who first time out gave up three earned runs in six innings, walked a couple, struck out four. 76 career wins. They threw 101 pitches in that out you're talking about. Big sign for the Red Sox in the offseason. Four year, $82.5 million contract. He's a sinker ball guy. The fastball average is 89 miles an hour, so he's not going to overpower you. A slider, curveball, and change to go with it. Second start of the year for Porcello. So he has to keep the ball down to be effective. If he throws anything belt high with plate, he'll get hit hard. Man, when you look at him and Scherzer and Fister, the ex Tiger pitchers scattered around the major leagues right now, it's amazing the staff they had there just a couple of years ago. Let's set the defense for. A weary Red Sox team, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Ramirez, Betts, Victorino, the outfield, Bogart, Sandoval, left side, Pedroia, Napoli, right side, and some guy named Sandy Leon behind the plate. Who's that? There he is. Their other catcher, the former Cincinnati Red, Ryan Hannigan. And Michael A. Taylor will step to the plate to lead off on opening day in Boston. Seeing Fenway for the first time in his career with Scherzer watching, Tyler Moore. Right handed batters have to avoid getting pull happy here. Manny Gonzalez has the plate. Jim Reynolds, the crew chief at first. Paul Schreiber, Clint Fagan. Second and third. It's Fenway Park, and here we go. Strike one. And we're underway at 313. Just a little bit late. Taylor a tapper. Day baseball can be tricky here. In fact, they close off some seats above the high wall in center field that's 17 feet high. This ballpark has a smaller capacity for day games than it does for night games. They drop that black tarp out there. That's so those hitters can pick up the baseball. If there was fans sitting out there, you'd be picking up a ball out of white shirts, and it's tough to hit. Yeah, but at night they let them sit there. 37,221 for day games, 37,673 for night games. Breaking ball right off the end of Michael's bat and is hanging tough here on an 0 2 count. Nationals hitting 194. They've scored 13 runs. They've given up 20. Their pitchers have kept them in the game and kept the ball in the park. Taylor on a change up with the strikeout. Porcello pulling the string nicely. I mentioned in the open, Nats right handers hitting 175 early in this year. And you'd think Jason Worth would have something to do with that change. And that's 26th in all of baseball. So. But this guy hasn't had a problem in the box right now. You know, Escobar has been maybe the best hitter this year. Yes. Easily. Seven hits, three walks. He's hitting 304. One for eight career against Porcello with an RBI. And it's interesting, almost, I'd say three out of every four foul balls Escobar hits are out of play to the other side of the field. That's because he's keeping his hands inside the ball. He's trying to work the middle in the other way. And the Red Sox try to counter by busting him in right there with the sinker. And pitchers will tell you, you have to pitch inside at Fenway. Move guys off the plate before you can go away, or else they can lean out and still hit that green monster. Escobar got jammed. It's looking good, and it's on the ground in right field. Yunel Escobar now eight for 24, batting 333. That is the first hit in Fenway Park in 197 days. So, folks, in a big, big way, there goes a the no hitter. They've been waiting for baseball around here for a while. They had a long winter. And Yonel Escobar with his hands inside the baseball, getting those hands in a good path. It's the first hit for the Nets. They had to laugh at their TV guy, Don Orsillo, with their two radio guys, Dave O'Brien and Joe Castiglione, emceeing the ceremony on the field today. First thing he said to the crowd, how do you like this green grass? <laughs> it was white grass all winter. 
Here's Harper. Bryce Harper gets one high in the air to right center. It is near the bullpen, and it is caught by Mookie Betts. Bryce must have gotten jammed just enough. That's about 390 at that bullpen wall. Bryce jogging back to the dugout, looking at the replay on the big scoreboard here. That would have been a home run, folks. He got enough of it. You see him get on top of that. The wind kind of blowing from right to left field as I look at the flag on the replay. That might have cut this ball down a little bit, but watch the play by Mookie Betts. That wolf's only five feet tall out there. And then Porcello likes it. He was almost down two to nothing. Here's Jason Ward. By the way, Escobar thought that ball might be caught, so he tagged and went to second. He might have been the only one who thought that. Smart play. It's either a home run or not, so he stayed on the base. And here's Jason Worth. How good does that look for a Nats fan? Worth at 292 with a 394 on base percentage last year. Usually stealing second base with two or third base with two outs is not a good play, but in Fenway Park with a short porch in left field, the stolen base is definitely in play with two outs, stealing third base. It's hard to score a runner from second on a base hit to left, so if they're yeah. going to give it to the Nats, they're going to take it with two outs. Yeah, that's a good call. Left fielders play so shallow here. Hanley Ramirez, an outfielder, really full time for the first time in his career. Started as a shortstop with the Marlins. Some short and third with the Dodgers, and here he is playing where Carl Yastrzemski used to play. Two and one to Worth, a hitter's count. He got a fastball. I don't care how long you've been playing the game. This is opening day for Jason Worth, and I guarantee you there's a few butterflies. He's driven in 82 each of the last two seasons. There goes the runner on a 2 2 pitch, but the inning's over. Strikeouts to Taylor and Worth. Single by Escobar and a near homer for Bryce Hartley. The Boston Red Sox score a lot of runs. They give up a lot of runs. 34 runs scored, 29 given up, fifth most runs in the league. And with this lineup, they're going to be up in that category all year long. Hanley Ramirez, 120 games in the National League against the Nationals. He has worn our pitching staff out. And a lot of that in the early years when the Nats didn't have nearly the staff they do now. He's off to a good start for the Red Sox, 8 for 25. Three home runs already out of their team total of seven. Jordan Zimmerman third career start against Boston the second here at Fenway where he had a no decision three years ago. Yeah, last start first start of the year for Jordan's a good one. 
Two to one win against the Mets. Six innings, five hits, gave up one run, struck out four Mets. Shocking that he didn't walk anybody. 91 pitches. Mookie Betts has already had a big influence on this game. With the bat, he's five for 26. Now you remember the first start for Jordan? It wasn't typical Jordan Zimmerman. It was with the guts and the determination, but his stuff wasn't there. He had fastball command problems the whole game. Mookie Betts, 22 years of age from Nashville. Named after Mookie Blaylock. The basketball player who played at Oklahoma and then in the NBA. Then he hit 291 in 52 games for the Red Sox in his big league debut last year. Great speed, good center fielder. We've already seen that. You don't want to walk anybody in this ballpark. Well, the Red Sox lead the majors in walks with 33. That's up and in. They're not a good trend setter early. They're a very patient ball club at the plate. They've seen more pitches than any other team in baseball. 1,215. They average 4.25 pitches in that bat. So they're going to make Jordan Zimmerman work. Next up, Dustin Pedroia, who's 31 now. A key part of a couple of world championship teams around here. That's on the inside edge for a strike. Pedroia one for six career with an RBI and a walk against Jordan Zimmerman. And he's six for 29 to start the season. They get these first two guys on base on a regular basis. The Red Sox are going to be hard to deal with. Offensively this summer. Runner going. Pitch has popped up. Taking a while for Mookie Betts to find the ball. Desmond was deking him all over the place, trying to make him think it was on the ground. He finally found it, and Taylor returned it in. And so the defense for the Nats behind Jordan Zero today. Worth. New guy just called up from Potomac and left. Taylor Harper, your outfield. Desmond Escobar left side. Espinosa Zimmerman right side. And Jose Lobaton. But it's good career numbers against Rick Porcello behind the plate. There he is. Got one of them back today. That's a good thing. They're going to shift on David Ortiz with Escobar setting up behind the second base umpire. Now this shift will change if Mookie Betts can steal second. He's holding. David Ortiz, 39 years old now. 467 home runs. 1,534 batted in. 547 doubles to start the season. He's got 547 doubles already this year? No. What do you mean? Career? 18 years. Six with Minnesota, 12 with the Red Sox. That'd be a good start, though, wouldn't it? It'd be amazing. Yeah. He said 416 of those home runs of the 467 as a DH. Runner going, breaking ball, good pitch to run. And then he's going to third. Zimmerman can't get him. He steals two bases on one play. Well, that's the danger of the shift, but Jordan Zimmerman's pointing to Matt Williams and he's telling him to review this play that he got him. And I don't think that Jordan would say that if he didn't. As soon as he tagged Mookie Betts or tried to tag Mookie Betts, he held his glove in the air. He pointed to his manager like he got him. So let's all take a look at it again. Everybody on the shift with Big Poppy heads up play by the Red Sox leadoff hitter. He knew that nobody's at third. And I think Desmond might have got him off the base right there. So you could actually appeal a couple of things right here if you're Matt Williams. I mean, there, there's, there's two options here. Did he get him right there? And when Betts came off the bag to go to third, did Desmond have the tag on him at second base? He might be out either way or safe either way. How about this? I, I, I honestly would appeal Desmond at second base first. And I don't know, can you do two and one? And I think that's what Matt Williams is going to come out and ask. He wants to appeal both.
So that's when, pointing to second base. When, right here is where the I umpire. think they have the best chance. Okay, his foot goes into the bag. He pops up. Desmond puts the tag on him. And yeah. was his hand on the base. That's going to be the first one. And then let's take a look at that one again. What do you got here? What do you think? Ooh, if he got him on the back before his hand got there, that's one. And then did Jordan get him right here on the jersey before he got to third? Oh, my gosh. This is too much too soon for me, Carp. you got to help me out. And I'll say one thing about Jordan Zimmerman. An amazing athletic play to not get tripped up by the runner or the umpire. He went over the runner right past the umpire. And now we can wait. This may take a while to sort out. If they call him out, the umpires will point to either second base or third base. This is this is crazy. I mean, you, you didn't even get a chance to settle in and, and grab a cold one and watch this game and run out, and all heck is breaking loose here at Fenway Park on opening day. The fans are saying safe at third. Well, they're going to say safe no matter what. <laughs> Uh, I have to be honest. I can't tell on either one, and I'm not afraid to have an opinion. I'm sure you know that. I, I can't tell, and if I can't tell, unless they have some other angles in New York. But they keep showing the replay at third on the board here, and now they're showing the one at second. Yeah, in his haste to pop off the bag and head for third, did Mookie Betts get himself tagged out there? John Farrell wants to know what's going on too. He's going to come out and say, "Well, which one are they appealing?" I'm surprised it took him this long. I just wonder if it's all considered one play. I mean, it's one continuous play. So no matter where he's out or safe, I would think that this appeal could cover second base or third base. We're not talking about two separate plays. Two separate calls on one play, yeah. You know, the runner made it a continuous play, and obviously, All right. yeah, there were two calls. Did you get him right here? Did you get him on the back? Okay, foot on the base, obviously safe. Pops up right there. Boy, that's too close, right? And then here's the one at third. Did Jordan get him on the jersey? And this one's close to. Does he get him right there before his hand hits? That's a great shot, guys. Good work. There's that athletic ability of Jordan Zimmerman. If you got him on the five, he's out. We thought this would take a while. This may be one of the longest of the year, actually. With the circumstances of the shift and two calls. Well, it would be a 2 0 count to Big Poppy with a runner on third and one out. So, this is very important for the Nationals and the Red Sox. Big RBI situation for the DH. Yeah. Come the headsets in a moment. What do you got? He's safe both places. And I think it boils down to because of the safe calls that were made, no indisputable evidence yeah. that attack had been made at either station. So it's 2 0, as FP said to David Ortiz, who's driven in one run. Now Matt Williams trying to decide what to do with the ship because. He doesn't want to allow Mookie Betts to come 50 feet down the line on every pitch. Or Ortiz just to bunt it to third and get an RBI. He's done it before. That's why he brought Escobar back home. The whole infield coming in. Oh, infield in in the first. Matt Williams telling you what he thinks about his offense right now. That's going to drive in a run one way or the other. And it's over the outstretched glove of Jason Worth. It'll be a long single for. David Ortiz and the Red Sox are on top. That ball was stung. But Jason Worth came in on it. And I'm telling you what, if, if you haven't played a whole lot of left field here at Fidway Park, it can be tricky. And why is it tricky? Because you're playing shallower than you're used to playing anywhere else. 
So the first chance for Jason Wirth, left fielder, is a tough one off the bat of David Ortiz. He misjudged it. He took two steps in, tried to recover. Next up is Hanley Ramirez. He and Jordan Zimmerman have had 25 matchups. There have been 10 hits in two other plate appearances, walks, a homer, six RBIs. Ramirez against Zimmerman. Target in. It's way in there, ball two. And that leadoff walk sure came back to haunt. Jordan's velocity has been down this year. He was 90 92 opening day, and he's sitting at 90 92 here in second start. Bouncing ball right side. It backed up Espinosa. Danny in self defense. And that really prevents the turning of the double play. So the 4 6 will leave Ramirez at first base for an old Nats nemesis from last October, Pablo Sandoval. I mean, the Nats just haven't played good defense yet this year. They, they really haven't. Jason Worth misjudged that. In, in his defense, it's his first game back, and that's a tough first try at a new position. But the triple clutch by Danny Espinosa right here. Cost Jordan Zimmerman more pitches here in the first. Yeah, it was a tough chance. It had topspin on it, but the defense hasn't been what Matt Williams has wanted yet. Pablo Sandoval didn't exactly wear out the Nats. He was four for 19 in that series. But he had that key RBI in game two after Jordan Zimmerman was taken out of the game. You want your stat of the day? Ready. Anytime you can turn Pablo Sandoval around, you do. Against left handed pitching this year as a right hander, he's 0 for 11. So you're going to see him face lefties this whole series late in the game. 9 for 19 batting left handed so far. He went on to hit 310 in the LCS and then went 8 for 16 in the World Series against Kansas City. Pardon me, that was his number in. 2012. He went 12 for 28 against Kansas City with four RBIs. I mean, the guy's hit almost 500 in his last two World Series. 3 0. Jordan Zimmerman, a long first inning here. He's fallen behind. He doesn't have his fastball command, doesn't have the velocity, and he looks quick to me, a lot like Drew Storm did late yesterday. Probably said an adrenaline going on. 3 0 County hitters count in this park, and Pablo was pumping. Crazy bottom of the first, huh? Heads up play by Mookie Betts. Yeah, you, you know, he made his mind up on that when he was sitting on first base, right? I make it to second, I'm off and running. Good call. It's like stretching a single into a double. You make up your mind in the batter's box with contact. That ball foul tipped on 93. Ramirez gets a head start at first on a full count and two outs. Big strong hitter on deck in first baseman Mike Napoli. These Red Sox can throw some bats at you. That's a fair ball. It hits the short corner. Bryce Harper will go get it. And it'll result in runners at first and third. Maybe the only park in baseball where that's a single. And by the way, I saw Tony Tarasco down there about three hours ago himself with a handful of baseballs hitting grounders into the corner to check out the spin, the carom, so he could share that with his outfielders. First and third, two outs. He just, Mike Napoli. You just can't give a team like the Red Sox extra outs. At the very best, it's costing Jordan Zimmerman more pitches, and at the worst, it might cost him more runs. These two facing each other for the first time. Napoli on the breaking ball, looking uncertain. He's one for 19 to start the season. This guy's hit 186 career home runs. Nine years with the Angels, Rangers, and Red Sox. He's at 40 homers here. 
over the last two years. Off the end of the bat, Ryan Zimmerman having a look. He's under it, and that gets the Nats out of the inning with only one run given up. It took a while. Massive brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you and by Ocean City, Maryland. Put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. That's over on Lansdowne Street, first baseline. They got a bunch of statues there. The one we were on first, the Splendid Splinter. It's Ted Williams with a young baseball fan. So we got an email from the league. It says the replay official determined that there was no clear and convincing evidence to confirm or overturn whether there was a tag applied prior to the runner reaching second base or a tag applied to the same runner prior reaching to third base. So just as we suspected, they reviewed both of those tags in one play. Ryan Zimmerman top of the second. Facing Rick Porcello for the first time. Ryan off to a very uncharacteristic start. Had a base hit, led to a run and a walk yesterday. Ryan's defense has been spectacular at first base. He's so matter of fact about it, too. A great play yesterday. Way to go. Thanks. Thanks. We won, didn't we? Yeah, okay. It's all matters. Dustin Pedroy is that kind of guy, too. And that's a good pick on the back end. By Mike Napoli. Great play by Pedroia. I mean, this ball's got a little hair on it. Ryan Zimmerman hit it hard up the middle, gets it in between hop to a semi dive. You see him have trouble on the transfer. Watch him have a little bit of trouble on the transfer right there. Double clutch. And Mike Napoli on a really tough pick. Yeah, Napoli, an ex catcher who has settled in nicely at first base. Here's the DH, Clint Robinson. Clint had a good series in Philly. Three for five yesterday. So he went four for six in that series. Drove in a key run Saturday night. Hit a ball a mile yesterday. And I asked him if he thought he got it. It hit the very top of the wall in the deepest part of right center at Citizens Bank Park in Philly. He said I got it really good but I, I thought it wasn't high enough to get out. And he's done. 93 fastball running for a strike and that's three for Porcello already. When the Nats win everyone wins and when they can win and score seven 
You get 50% off regular menu price online orders at PapaJohns.com. Promo code NATS50. That's valid in D.C., Maryland, Northern Virginia at participating Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza from the official pizza of the Nats. Here's Ian Desmond. Another net seeing Porcello for the first time. High bouncer, Pablo Sandoval fires to first. We call that a vertical leap in basketball. And the Panda got off the ground pretty well for that. the Red Sox chaotic last three days. Friday night they played a 19 inning ball game that took nearly seven hours to complete. Saturday they had a quick turnaround. They had to play a one o'clock game. And then last night they were on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. They played a game that finished at around 11.30. They didn't get back to Boston until around 3.30 this morning. Most guys only got a few hours of sleep. Former Nats catcher Sandy Leon, now with the Sox, said he and most position players feel okay physically today, but that the pitching staff is a bit worn down, and that's with due, due reason, guys. The Sox bullpen worked 20 and a third innings over the last three days, so obviously you want to get into the bullpen anytime you can, but especially given how much this Sox bullpen has worked, that'll be a factor in this series. Thank you, Dan Coco, with our Coons.com sideline report. When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. Yeah, they took two out of three in New York. Oh, you know what else? When you haven't been home yet this season, you still have to get to your new apartment. You have to get your car off a truck that's been shipped up from Florida. So the Red Sox didn't get to bed till the wee hours of this morning. Escobar will be able to cut that one off. Off the bat of the old Nets tormentor in Philadelphia, Shane Victorino. Jordan Zimmerman will now face numbers eight and nine. Xander Bogarts, the shortstop, and our old friend Sandy Leon. Bogarts is 22. We were hearing about him back in 2012 when we were here. He was in the process of hitting 300 at single A and double A that summer. Got called up the following year. 144 games last year hit 240. And Bogarts off to a hot start here. He's from Aruba. Red Sox signed him as an international free agent at the age of 16 back in 09. He's 11 for 27 to start the season. Has a twin brother, Jair, who's a first baseman in the Red Sox organization. Ian Desmond from behind the bag. Pulls Zimmerman off the bag. And we'll see how they score it. It could go either way. The error, if it is an error, was on Ian Desmond's lower body when he catches the ball, when he caught the ball, excuse me. 
Watch him kind of wrestle the baseball right there, and he doesn't get his feet underneath him, and because he doesn't get his feet underneath him, he has to rush. And when he rushes, he throws it up the line. And I think that's an error. His fifth in seven games. I mean, you could see him coming for that ball, and you could see the fight that was happening before he even got to the baseball. When he got to the ball, he wrestled it into his glove. And because he wasn't smooth fielding the baseball, his feet were out of whack. And when his, your feet are out of whack, three younger players, throwing errors are made with your lower half. They're not made with your arm. If your feet aren't in the right position, then your arm's not going to follow and the ball's going to sail wherever. So that error was made with the lower half before he even threw it. Sandy Leon off to an 0 for 4 start. Sharing the catching duties with Ryan Hannigan. Sandy 0 for 3 left handed. Hit a buck 56. 10 hits and 64 at bats with a homer. For the Nationals last year. Up the middle. Well placed. Bogarts will stop at second. And Sandy Leone checks in with his first hit of the year against his old ball club. So the, the obvious thing is the throw and how it sails up the line. Maybe fooled a little bit by Bogart's speed, but but in baseball terms, watch his lower half right here. See him fight the baseball. It's not smooth, and then he has to really get his feet underneath him again. If you're in rhythm as a shortstop, you see him right here fight it, and he's kind of off balance. Now he tries to right himself, but as he does. He really never got his feet underneath him, and that's why the throw sailed up the line. It's it's a lot like with Drew Storen yesterday. He was rushing his lower half, and his arm was trailing, and he didn't have his legs underneath him. Same thing with Desmond, that throw right there. Here's Mookie Betts, who's been responsible for three runs in this game. Even though only one has been scored, the two he took away from Harper in the Nets, and then the leadoff walk and the two steals. And everybody, Carp, is asking me why, why, why in April does Ian play like this on defense? And, and I have no no explanation. I, I have some theories that, you know, he's a rhythm guy like I've talked about before. But April, he has trouble. May on, he's as good as anybody. And a ball heading for the Green Monster, and that's way over the Green Monster. And it is Mookie Day so far here at Fenway. That ball was crushed. He bets second of the year. Four nothing Boston. Here's Pedroia. Well, check out the location right here. He wanted it in. And he, he got it right where he wanted it. And sometimes good hitters beat good pitches, but Mookie Betts was looking for the fastball in, got it, and put his team up by four. I mean that ball was 10 to 15 feet higher than the 37 foot monster when it left the yard. I'm just not believing what I'm seeing early in the season. It, you know, Jason Worth misjudging a ball. He's as solid as anybody in the outfield. Danny Espinosa, as good as anybody at second, double clutching a double play ball. And then Ian Desmond, that shortstop. This has just been going on so far repeatedly early in the season. It'll change, folks. But right now, Matt Williams has to be frustrated because the defense hasn't been major league up to this point. This is a big league. Those plays have to be made. Yeah, you put it all together, and as you and I talked about after the bottom of the first, the Red Sox basically were given five outs in that first frame. That ball to left, and Worth's going to only be able to watch it drop in front of him. Jordan Zimmerman has given up five hits already.
And now it really gets tough with Ortiz and Ramirez the next two and Steve McCaddy to the mound. Manny Gonzalez, the home plate umpire, will come out and break it up. Mets have their home opener today. They're leading the Phillies 1 0, eighth inning down at City Field. And the Pirates are trying to make big baseball history today by beating the Detroit Tigers, who are 6 0. They lead at home 5 1 interleague action at Pittsburgh. Eighth inning. Detroit and Kansas City in the same division are both 6 and 0. Here's Ortiz. Drove that ball over Worth's head first time and Jason's playing him a lot deeper this time. Fifteen hundred and thirty five RBIs now. He's the number one DH in homers, RBIs, hits, approaching 1900, runs, doubles, extra base hits, and total bases. Last time Zimmerman lost, July 22nd. A long way to go on this one for sure. But, you know, his velocity isn't what it was last year yet in 2015. And a chopper right side. Espinosa will get the lead runner. And with Big Poppy lumbering down first, able to turn it. Ian Desmond on the 4 6 3. But the Red Sox pick up three, one unearned, and lead by four. They know there's a long way to go in this one, and so do we. Long way to go to 2018, but we're going to talk about it for three years. Washington, D.C. and Nationals Park will host the 2018 Major League Baseball All-Star Game. You have first priority for tickets. You must right now become a 2015 full-season plan holder. For details, visit nationals.com slash D.C. and 18. I see red people. I see sad red people, and we need to put some smiles on those. Sad red people. Turn those frowns upside down. It's a beautiful day here. Lobatone Espinosa Taylor. Well, things at Fenway can change in an instant. Jose Lobatone, first of all, giving Wilson Ramos a day off. Wilson's been busy, but Jose's also three for six career with two RBIs against Rick Porcello. 24 pitches, 18 strikes, the first two innings. When he is 
experience I had this morning was telling some of the Red Sox guys the times of our games so far. Oh. They're like, you do games that begin with the number two. We had a 220 at home, had some other quick ones. Extra innings the last two games. But I mean, when they just come off a weekend playing the Yankees, this will seem like a sprint for them. Breaking ball, Lobatone to the second baseman, Pedroia. A kid that any manager or coach in America would love having on their team. That guy out at second base. What a sight. Looking east toward the Prudential Tower. Massachusetts Turnpike right behind the left field wall here. It's an amazing setting here at the Fins. Getting all kinds of texts from friends back in D.C. wishing they were here. While we don't want to rub it in. We do wish you were here. It is. Spectacular. But when you texted them back man man and then I <laughs> thought that was a little harsh. I have, I have never nor will ever text Nan Nan. <laughs> How do you spell the? Danny went for Ford here. He is batting left handed. Hit the ball hard, a double in Philadelphia the other night from this side of the plate. He gets jammed on that one and pops it up for Hanley Ramirez. <laughs> Two quick outs in that. Would be seven in a row for Porcello since he jammed Escobar and Yunel just barely dropped one into right field. So he's for real close to being perfect so far with the help of some good defense. In fact, for Mookie Betts, some great defense. Michael Taylor struck out first time. Michael's got to prove to some major league pitchers. He can hit the ball the other way or else he's going to be seeing some fastballs in and junk away. That's a fastball that got inside on him enough. That's the right fielder Shane Victorino and Porcello is cruising opening day in Boston with a four run lead. Four to nothing Red Sox as we go to the bottom of the third inning. It's been Mookie Betts show so far. Three run home run. Robin Bryce Harper of a home run. Bryce didn't get full extension on this ball but it was hit well enough to get out of here. You see him going over the fence to Rob Harper. And then at the plate. The obvious one is the home run he hit his second at bat but the walk and the stolen base a couple of stolen bases actually in the first inning kind of ignited his ball club and got him out in front one nothing then the three run job to make it four nothing. Yeah he's had a hand in everything happening on the scoreboard here. Hanley Ramirez Pablo Sandoval Mike Napoli bottom of the third. And Zimmerman with a good looking late breaking slider to the outside corner. Hanley Ramirez bounced into a four six fielders choice. 
That might have been a double play ball first time up. Ramirez used to wear out that short porch in left field in Miami before the Marlins moved out of the football stadium, and he could do the same thing here. He has 194 career home runs. Three already this year. Mercedes Benz will track a close one. Not a bad pitch. It was 0 2 there. That'll move him back. Counts even. Target in. Jammed him. I like what Jordan's doing to Hanley Ramirez right here. A little more aggressive with the fastball, pounding the man. I like it. Again. As soon as you see him start to cheat to that fastball in, it opens up the slider away. But based on the swings and reading him right now, he's still trying to get his hands and, and fight that ball to the right side. So slider might be open on the other side, but you can keep pounding him if you want. Oh my! Way up and in. It got Hamie Ramirez. And he'll walk down the line, toss the bat away, actually just drop it, and down to first base he goes. I'm going to see the reaction by Jordan. He didn't want to hit him. I mean, he's just trying to pitch him inside. His mechanics have been out of whack the first two starts. Pablo Sandoval. He pulled one between Ryan Zimmerman and the first base bag. First time up. Now he's now seven for 14 career against Jordan Zimmerman. He is signed through 2019. The Red Sox have a club option for the year after that. It's a breaking ball that's off the other way. But you see the approach of all these Red Sox hitters. They're keeping their hands inside. They're thinking about going the other way. And why is that a big deal? Well, it makes it tough on a pitcher. Now you're facing guys that don't have holes in their swings. If you see guys trying to pull the baseball, you can deal with that as a pitcher because now you can throw them soft, you can set them up. But when you have David Ortiz coming up going the other way, Dustin Pedroia hands inside going the other way. You just saw Hanley Ramirez fighting off tough pitches inside. Pablo Sandoval right there. Now, as a pitcher, you stand on the mound. Where do I go to get these guys out? Because the inside part isn't open. Thus, you see the all the pitches per at bat, the league, league and walks. It, yeah. the, the, the approach all these guys have is solid. Yeah, so Sandoval fits in well with this offense. And a one-two is up and away. Pablo Sandoval. I'll have to say one thing for a guy who hits homers and hits for power. He has never struck out a hundred times in any major league season. He makes contact. He usually has about half as many walks as strikeouts, sometimes more. Well, I'd like to say he swings out a lot of first pitches, but he does. He'll fight you with two strikes, too. He makes adjustments. No strikeouts ever last year, 85. In 588 at bats with San Francisco. The chase off speed in the dirt with two. And go below the strike zone soft to get him out.
Nissan will give you the target practice on this at bat, that third pitch way up and in. Sandoval hanging tough here. And that's a breaking ball that hits him, and Pablo is angry. You're not going to hit a guy with a slider. But Jordan Zimmerman all over the place right now. I, I don't know that I've ever seen Jordan Zimmerman do this. And that was a slider. He's trying to go under his hands. And a guy with impeccable command that walked just 29 hitters all last year in 32 starts has hit back to back hitters here to start up the third. The Red Sox counting the error have had 10 base runners already. And there's nobody out in the third inning. Next up, Mike Napoli. Fouled out to Ryan Zimmerman first time. This one a mile high out in the left center. Taylor and Worth. And then Michael lets it drop. The bases will be loaded. Taylor overran the ball. And what is going on with this defense? I, I don't know. They were looking at each other. Jason Worth takes his eyes off, looks at Taylor. The wind is blowing out. So this ball had a little more carry to it, but. Center fielder's got to be the take charge guy there. Well, I just don't know how you miss a fly ball by that one. I really don't. Here's a contact man, Shane Victorino. Ice slider, ball one. Can we go back to the national anthem and start this one over? Are you talking about this Monday or last Monday? This one right here. Upstairs. They score that a hit? Yeah. Yeah, the wind's kind of shifting. It was blowing a little to the left when that ball was hit. Then it went straight out to center. Now it's shifted back. Now Victorino pops one up. Infield fly rule in effect. Espinosa the grab for the first out. There's light at the end of the tunnel here in the third inning. Number eight and nine hitters coming up, Bogarts and Leon. Yeah, the wind's been shifting so much that flag's wrapped around the pole right now. There's a wind gauge out there. Maybe you. Look at that if you're a fielder, not the flag. He had to lose that in the sun. There's no way you just miss a ball by 10 feet like that. Bogarts into right, and that's going to drop. One run in. Sandoval stops at third, and it's 5 0. Bogarts, seventh RBI of the year. I mean, lost in all of this is, is the extra pitches that Jordan Zimmerman has thrown. He's got 58 pitches already in this game. 32 strikes. And base runners all over the place that shouldn't even be on base. So possibly the long man, Tanner Roark. Significant work in his future today. Here's Sandy Leone singled up the middle first time. The 
this is their 3:30 a.m. offense. They hate to face a well-rested Red Sox team. Sometimes you just go, just go out and play. Well, they're, they're not exactly tearing the cover off the ball. They've just been given a few gift wrap base runners. That's all. But the only hard hit ball in my book is the home run by Mookie Betts. Well, Ortiz too, so two. But when you're constantly redlining and trying to pitch out of jams and make the perfect pitch, this is what's going to happen. Boy, two and zero, oh another hitter. Sandy lay on with a big rip and the counts even. I'm ready for a foul ball by the way. Oh, it's the over under was the fourth inning on when that would come what, up. What would you like me to talk about? Right now? <laughs> well that was you know what for you that was good defense. Thank you. So we are talking some defense. Yeah, I see you working. All right. <laughs> It's hard to tell with Jordan's mechanics. They look sound to me. He's such a quick worker all the time, and his, you know, his delivery is so compact all the time. But is the velocity a concern? A little bit. He's I mean, it's good. we're not. It's not 40 degrees in April right now. No, it's, it's a good get loose day. He's throwing 90. And he's used to throwing 94, 95. Close, very good close. It's a good pitch. And it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the arm. Sometimes your mechanics can be out of whack. And as a pitcher, you start to think so much about your mechanics and maybe putting a band aid on it as you look at the pitch again. That, that now it takes away from being free and easy and get that whip out at, at the end when you release the ball. And it, Jordan. And so I'm not trying to be an alarmist and say he's hurt, but the velocity is down. I think it's a mechanical thing. Leon pops it in the right. Rice Harper. Oh my goodness. Oh my. I thought Bryce was setting up for a throw home. He just stopped. And that was his ball. Taylor had a long way to go. And the Nationals are just letting them drop everywhere. You know, as embarrassing as this is, I've been a part of this. And when one guy makes an error, you start thinking to yourself as a defender, boy, that looked terrible. I don't want to do it. And it becomes contagious. You know how you say it is contagious? Awful defense is just as contagious. And I've been on teams like this. And I've been in teams like days like this. So when you see the guy next to you do it, you say, oh, my God, I don't want that to happen to me. And that's the prevailing thought in your head. Instead of I'm going to be on a highlight reel tonight, I'm going to make a sick play. You end up making a horrible play because the thought in your head is everything that's going on around you. And right now it's snowballing. And this is something like I've never seen before. Look out. Here's Mookie Betts batting for the third time in three innings. There's a lot of guys in gray uniforms that are embarrassed right now. Six nothing. Still only one out. Two hit batters. Three hits in the end. Two should have been caught. Got to keep battling if you're Jordan Zimmerman. No, but these aren't tough plays, Bob. I know. I mean, these are plays that, that have to be made at the lowest level of baseball, let alone at the major league level. You know, when I saw, saw Bryce pull up, I just thought he was. Getting his body behind the ball for the throw. Oh, I saw and then all of a sudden he looked at Taylor and that was it. I saw it coming all the way. They're both looking at each other. Escobar can't get it. Desmond drops it. We'll see how they rule that one. 
Ian Desmond might have been blinded by Escobar in front of him. Might have still been a play at first base, and Jordan Zimmerman's leaving the ball game. Unbelievable. Have you ever heard an entire team tell their pitcher they're sorry as he leaves the mound? Jordan deserved better today. This call to the bullpen packaged by the UPS store. Your one stop shop for all your small business needs. Let us handle your mailbox service needs. We love logistics. On plays that should have been made, the outfield getting these together, and Captain Jason Worth out there probably doing most of the talking. Tanner Roark takes over here in the bottom of the third. He's facing Dustin Pedroia. It'll be first time a lot of these hitters have seen Tanner. Only Miley, who pitches Wednesday, Wade Miley, Pablo Sandoval, and another reliever. Anthony Vavaro have ever added bats against Tanner. Pedroia one for two with the base hit to left last time. Base is still loaded, one out. Austin leads seven nothing. Slider away. And a good heater to the outer edge, 92. I'm not saying anything because my mind is still processing what I've seen this evening. It's going a million miles an hour. On I, things I've never seen at the major league level. I've never seen two high fly balls drop without a glove on it in the same inning ever. Right when you think you've seen everything. Roark delivers a strike and it's a fly ball for Taylor in center. Michael will throw it into short to keep the other runners from advancing. After Bogart scores to make it eight nothing. Well, I'm 
obviously not the highlight reel you were thinking when you came to the ballpark today, but Michael Taylor, I don't know if he lost that in the sun, overran it, hit a wind shear at the end. These guys both looking at each other. Somebody's got to take charge right there. And usually it's the center fielder that does, but they were both kind of lost. And then, you know, Escobar, who hasn't played a whole lot of third base, going for that ball, kind of blocked out Ian Desmond. And yeah. All three of those were old hits, and they have to be pretty much. Here's Ortiz. With the other way, RBI hit first inning. Double play ball, second inning. Off speed 80 fading away from the left hander. Well, the hitting conditions aren't going to get any easier, so Tanner Rollard trying to take advantage of some shadows right now, getting that strike zone. Nice change up right there to Ortiz. Off the glove of Lobatone and he popped up expecting to have to make a throw, but the other catcher, Sandy Leone, staying at second. I mean, if there's any silver lining to this, it's the Tanner Roark's going to be able to get into a rhythm and get some work done here. I know that's not much of a silver lining, and that's going to don't want to hear that right now, but at least he'll get some innings and be able to do his thing, which he hasn't really had a chance to yet. Ortiz lifting one to right. Bryce Harper fighting the sun. He's got it. Nine batters. The Red Sox pick up three runs. They leave a couple. It's eight nothing into the middle innings. Nothing as this one cruises into the top of the fourth inning. You can treat your clients, employees, friends, or family to an amazing outing at Nats Park this season. New for 2015 or brand new fan experiences that include watching batting practice from the dugout or holding the finish line for the Geico President's Race. Ian Desmond holding the bat left handed right there. Top of the fourth inning. Honda do up interleague play since the start of last year. Escobar, Harper, Worth all hitting in the 200s, but they've all three done some extra base hit damage. Yunel Escobar has the only Nats hit today. 
A blooper over the first baseman Napoli with one out first inning. Since then eight straight for Rick Porcello. 32 pitches 25 strikes and. You now up there hacking. Porcello's job right now is to fill that strike zone up early and often. Mets beat the Phillies at home today, 2 0. And their home opener. To the left of the shortstop, Bogart's over to get it. Low throw, and Napoli can't pick it. As he crossed the bag, Escobar already was giving Jim Reynolds the safe sign. And if they give him a hit, it's because the scorer thinks he was already at the bag. We'll see. I give him a hit on that. Bogarts took his time. He did, then he tried to hurry at the end. After looking at it again, I don't know if they're going to give him a hit. What do yeah. you have? I'd give an error because the throw beat him. Nothing on the board yet. This game's not going to make you want to go out and buy a glove at Sports Authority today. E6. Bogart's second error of the year. Boy, how different could this game have been early if Mookie Betts doesn't reach into the bullpen to pull back the Harper Homer? And that's where within Inches of being up to nothing before Jordan Zimmerman ever threw a pitch. That's where everyone's been trying to go with two strikes. To get Bryce Harper out. That elevated fastball is a good take. Harper breaks his bat. On a ball to the right of Pesky's pole. Hitting 250 in the early going. And he's late for 93 away. One out. Porcello, strikeout number four. With more on Jason Worth stepping in, here's Dan. Bob, as we've discussed, this is Worth's first game back from the shoulder surgery that he had this spring. As FP said, he's a little unsure how he'll feel early on because he's never dealt with a shoulder surgery like this before, but he tested it pretty heavily in workouts and then in rehab games. Him and Matt Williams have discussed his workload early on. They're going to play it by ear with how frequently he does play. One minor factor is he hasn't played a full nine innings yet, but he will get a chance to DH this series if needed. They're going to check with him every day, see how he's feeling, see how many innings he feels he can go. They'll kind of monitor things on a day-by-day -day basis, at least early on. Yeah, Jason wanted to play left field today, but he said this morning, Based on how he feels tomorrow, maybe the DH. That's an easy 6 3 double play ball. Nationals gone, top of the fourth inning. Offense still quiet. Red Sox making all the noise right now.
Yeah, big poppy kept uh, Mr. Brady from an incompletion there. A lot of Nats fans gathered as a group. And they need something to have fun with in that upper deck over on the left field foul side. Bottom of the fourth inning. Tanner Roark and Hanley Ramirez. Tanner 11 pitches six strikes. Getting the last two fly ball outs of the third inning. Jordan Zimmerman. In two and a third through 70 pitches. Missed with 30 of them. That's a busted bat. But Hanley Ramirez looks a lot bigger to me than he did last year. They list him at 6'2, 225, which I think is 10 pounds more than he was listed last year. We have one camera locked on you this whole series. Man. I was ready for that one. It was close. <laughs> Pass ball up and away. Two and two. With the wind whipping up, I think you can hear it through some of our microphones around the ballpark. Blowing toward the left field corner right now. If you're wondering how you turn this whole defense thing around, it, it, it's it's almost the opposite of what you would think. If you think it'd come out early and take a million ground balls and yell and scream and say what the heck this can't happen that's not how you do it you, you, you probably do the opposite and just say hey let's stop thinking about things and we're not going to take ground balls today and we know you're better than this but yelling screaming flipping spreads we're going to get here at nine in the morning and take a million ground balls is just going to make the situation worse it's going to reinforce that you're not doing what you're supposed to do even more and a three two pitch popped up over by the on deck circle and Tanner Roar. Being the athlete he is, making one of the best plays you'll see by a pitcher this year. Well done. It's this is Tanner Roar in a nutshell. For maybe some of you new Nats fans that really didn't see a whole lot of him last year, this is all you need to know about Tanner Roar, the former high school quarterback and the athlete that he is. And he was the only one that could have got to that baseball. And maybe something like that. Could, Added to my comments about defense, you see something like that. Maybe that changes how you approach it. I don't know. That was a great play. That was fantastic. Eight nothing game. That's what Tanner is all about right there. And he got some nice applause from the Red Sox fans for that. That's a breaking ball that bounces out in front of home plate with Pablo Sandoval stepping in. The only position player on the Red Sox who's ever faced Tanner. He's one for one against him. With a single last year. And him reaching. Danny Espinosa to a knee, two down. Because in my experience is Carb, when you have those meetings, it, it, I, I had them a million times. You know, the runner on third, less than two out meetings, and we're not picking up the runner with a sack fly, we're not putting into play, and you have these meetings about how you approach that situation. And, Next thing you know, you see guys gripping the sawdust out of the bat when there's a runner on third less than two out because of the meetings that you had about it. Now it becomes an even bigger elephant in the room, yeah. and it usually goes worse before it gets better. So the reason I said that about defense is, hey, just quit working so hard. Quit thinking about it. Relax a little bit. It's going to change. All these players are, are great defenders. We've seen it in the past. After April, Ian Desmond's as good as anybody at shortstop. So I mean, it's going to change. But, the, but if you keep emphasizing that it has to change, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Tanner Roark throwing strikes. Mike Napoli, the hitter. And that fastball up and away. Pirates dealt Detroit their first loss today, winning 5 4 in Pittsburgh. 82 good looking breaking ball didn't get the call from Manny Gonzalez. 
And it's even to Napoli 2 2. 33 year old first baseman, former catcher. And Roark had him reaching. Escobar to his left with a nice scoop to Ryan Zimmerman on a great play by himself and two grounders. Roark takes care of the fourth and Zimmerman straight ahead. Go to the top of the fifth inning. You can join the Nationals on Friday, April 17th, as they host Military Appreciation Day. It's part of the season's patriotic series. It's presented by SAIC. All active duty dependent, reservists, and retired military members can receive two complimentary game tickets per military ID while supplies last. Tickets will be available at Nats Park ticket windows on Potomac Avenue near the Blue Tent. And that starts at 4 p.m. Porcello through his first four innings today. 41 pitches, 33 strikes. Zimmerman had a hit taken away by Petroya up the middle, first time up. Taking on 2 0. The Nats need runners. Clint Robinson, the DH, and Ian Desmond, the follow here. Top five. Zimmerman hits one a ton to center. Chasing Mookie Betts back, and that ball is up in the seats over a 17 foot wall in dead center field. Ryan Zimmerman, second of the year. You know, when Ryan hits them high like that, they stay hit. And that ball had some kind of carry to it. And the wind's blowing across from right field to left, so that was against traffic, folks. Second home run of the year for Ryan Zimmerman, and it was a big one. I mean, how far that ball went, I was shocked. That that was against the wind. 186 career home run. That'll bring in Clint Robinson. What a blast. And when you talk about you know Dan's report on how the bullpen's depleted for the Red Sox, if you if you can find a way to get in there, stranger things have happened, and it would indeed be strange. He's behind another hitter, two and one here. Big fella who has not hit a homer in the big leagues. Way outside, ball three.
And Robinson gets one to center. That's chasing Mookie Betts back. And this ball is off the top of the wall. He's going to dig for three. Robinson in there sliding. He's at third with nobody out. And Clint Robinson almost got his first big league home run. After yesterday's near miss and today's near miss, there's going to be guys in the Nats dugout that are going to tell Cliff Robinson to get in the weight room. But those two swings, I thought he had them. I mean, get ahead in the count, catcher out front, and you can see just a little bit off the sweet spot. And I'm looking at the flag. It, it, it might be carrying that way. But when I looked at Ryan Zimmerman's, it was blowing in. Now it's kind of blowing out to center. But regardless, good hustle by Clint Robinson. How many times do you see guys thinking they got a home run? They're just kind of jogging around, happy with the double. He was busting it on the batter's box. And the more we see of Clint Robinson, the more we like him. First career wow. triple. <laughs> Five out of 12 with the Nats. Desmond has to get this run home right now. The Nats can go from there. It's he goes up ripping and a good cut. It's kind of a joke line the players do between each other when you hit a ball off the wall. They tell you, weight room. Get in the weight room. Don't they want to tell a guy 6'5", 247 <laughs> that? <laughs> I'm not going to tell him. It's a good swing. Desmond jammed and it's 0 and 2. Clint Robinson has picked out two different ballparks in which to hit it to the farthest point in deep right center. Yeah. Good call. Way up and into Ian Desmond. Lays off the curve in the dirt, well blocked by Sandy Leone, who was always a solid defensive catcher in the Nats organization. Good for him getting a chance to play at the big league level. Yeah, we like Sandy. Good receiver. Good catch and throw guy. Runs a good game. 2 2 and Desmond. A good take to fill the count. And who knows how to pitch Nats hitters better than Sandy Leone, right? Yeah. Knowing what to do and executing it, though, are two different things. Desmond lines out to the second baseman. Right off the end of the bat. Robinson stayed home. One out. Now we'll see if Jose Lobatone can collect his third career RBI against Rick Porcello. Go back to the Zimmerman blast. Belt tie fastball. That's the mini monster out there. It's 20 feet shorter than the green monster. But out there to clear a 17 foot wall, some kind of blast. And that ball almost got away. Good block by Leon. Fastball on the edge, tailing away. Counts even 1 1. Lobatone, that's a foul ball. Two two count. That's close ball three. Yeah, Porcello won that one. Tried to run back fastball on Jose Lobatone. Looked like it went either way. 
Mercedes Benz on the pitch track. What does it think? Yeah, borderline. Good at bat by Jose Lobaton. He's aboard with one out. 3 2 curveball up by seven runs. Yeah. Are you kidding me with that pitch selection right there? Interesting. I mean, those have a chance. You see sometimes that'll come back and haunt you. For the achiever in you, PNC Bank with our minor league report. We saw a little bit of Caleb Ramsey in spring training. First four games on fire for the Triple A Syracuse Chiefs. First ever Triple A home run. Good for Caleb Ramsey. He's ready. Call him up. Took a little bit off on the inside corner. If you're wondering why I questioned the pitch right there, you know, you're up by seven runs, throw a strike, throw a fastball right down the middle, and if he hits a sack fly or gets a base hit, so what? When I mean, you see guys trying to get tricky, he, he's telling you he's more worried about his ERA than getting outs. And, and, and that'll get the attention of a dugout, too. You see a guy flip a curveball in there, 3 2, up by seven, you start thinking in your dugout, he's scared. Espinosa chops one. They'll just take the sure out Napoli to the bag and Danny picks up the RBI. It's an 8 2 game. Lobatone to second base. Productive out. Clint Robinson getting some high fives in the Nats dugout right now. Another, another good at bat. Hey, you got to pull for a guy who's 30 years of age getting really his first taste of big league action after two cups of coffee. Some of the Red Sox broadcasters I talked to before the game, they knew about him. Watching him with Kansas City just here and there over the years. And like me, they were a little stumped that he never got more of a shot in the big leagues with some of the triple A numbers he put up. He can hit. Michael Taylor. The Nats are one fly ball toward the green monster away from being back in this game. And you know Michael Taylor would love to get into one right here to make up for a few miscues in the outfield today. You never know, young player might have been a little bit overwhelmed with the whole scene here. You never know. For a veteran player coming into Fenway Park in a full house on opening day, it can be intimidating. I was telling Michael before the game, my first at bat here was against Pedro Martinez. Got to an 0-2 count leading off the game, and the whole park stood up. And I said, "Wait, is this the last out of the game or the first out of the game?" <laughs> and I, I mean, I stepped out, looked around, and they were all on their feet because every time Pedro pitched here, it was an event. And leading off the game in an 0-2 count, they all got on their feet, and I said, "Wait a minute." So even for the, the most widely veterans this place could be a little bit intimidating. Three two now with two outs. You saw the pitch count long long frame for Rick Porcello. And Taylor will sky one over by the tarp looks like the breeze is keeping it in. And Pedroia is going to make the grab. Ball came twisting back. Ryan Zimmerman got the Nats going with his second home run of the year. And for Zimmerman, what a blast. 186 career.
40 of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Bottom of the fifth, Red Sox will have seven, eight, and nine coming up. Tanner Roark's ready. He was uh, ready to get on the rubber with 10 seconds left on the between innings clock. Which is out in dead center field here. Oh! But there's little things like that play he made. You, you miss a guy like Tanner Roark. And we used to look forward to that fifth day when he'd start. Just because of things like that. And a breaking ball reaching out for it. Victorino. Jason Worth is there in the shade for the first out. And Tanner Rowar comes into this game and retires six consecutive Boston batters. You know, probably like that Tanner Rowar play the most? Doug Fister. Yeah. Yeah. He goes for pop ups in the upper deck, so he probably is digging that. I'd say after everybody back in Wilmington, Illinois, yeah, yeah. Fister. Well, his job is to keep it right there, save the bullpen, and hope the offense can get a few base runners and pop one out of here. Here's Xander Bogart's bloop single last time. Oh. Tanner's looking like a guy in the third inning of a start, really getting into his flow here. He's got guys reaching for the ball, lunging. Bouncer up the middle. Desmond to his left, picks it, turns and fires, and Zimmerman has to go back in to keep it away from the Boston dugout. That'll be a hit all the way. Good range by E. Desmond, but by the time he gets there, the speed of Bogarts is just not going to happen. But look how far Desmond goes for this ball. Spin, nice pick by Zimmerman. But Bogarts way past the bag by the time the throw gets there. One on one out. Red Sox with their 10th hit. Sandy Leon two for two today. Base it up the middle in the second. Scored a run. The fly ball that fell out in right center in the third drove in a run. Oh. Nissan will track that one. Down the zone. Did it get the corner? A seam maybe. Clearly. And he got the call. Hey, you're around the plate, you get those calls. And this will be out of play to the left side. Sandy Leon still just 25 years old. A non drafted free agent when the Nats signed him at the age of 17, eight years ago. Traded to the Red Sox for cash considerations on March 30th. 2 2 pitch. Fastball. It's hit by Zimmerman. Sandy Leon is three for three. Harper picks it up in the corner, and the Red Sox have runners at the corners with one out. Guys who can hit. That ninth in this league because of the DH. Having a good day against his old squad. Gets the pitch on the inner half because Ryan Zerman's holding Bogarts. 
He's playing shallow, can't react. Nice piece of hit by Sandy Leone again. Top of the order, Mookie Betts, who's been perfect. Walk two steals, a run, three run homer, RBI single. He gets jammed into center. Taylor's got it. Runner tagging and he goes back. Look at that throw. A one hop laser. A nice play by Michael Taylor. That's kind of the way this one's gone. This is the hardest play for a center fielder. The low line drive right between your eyes. Taylor got a great jump on it. And you see the arm strength right on the money. We've been talking about his arm for a while. He showed it in the gap in left center the other night. And he shows it off right there. Look to me like from that side view like the ball came back as quickly as it went out off the bat. That'll make you feel a little better out there. It's a nice play. Here's Pedroia, a tough out. He's one for two with a sacrifice fly. These errors we're seeing, Carpet, some weren't scored errors today. They're, they're mental errors. As a skipper, you could deal with physical errors. That's part of the game. I mean, guys are going to make errors. But the mental errors, the, the not communicating, the letting balls drop, those are the things that will eat at you. And we always talk about Matt Williams and how he can handle losing, but when it's because of bad defense, that's when he really gets ticked off. Physical errors are part of the game. Two oh ninety one whistles in there. Check swing and a breaking ball. Love the way Dustin Pedroia plays. One of my favorite players in baseball has been for a long time. 2 2. And a challenge fastball. It's healthy this year, too. Had some wrist problems last year. Yeah, strong he's been beat up. Yeah. Got back in the weight room strong again. Had a nice sprint. Fenway Park in Boston, rush hour. Nearby here, but not a person in this ballpark cares. Capacity crowd of over 37,000 at Fenway today. 8 2 Red Sox. Up the middle to his left, Desmond. Shovels. Nicely done to Espinosa. Another zero on the board for Tanner Roark, who might be saving this game today and helping his team out a lot tomorrow.
Back into this one. We'll see what happens here. Get some base runners on, pop one out. You never know. What you do know is that MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrated 13 years. You have to know because we read it every day. Watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Top of the sixth inning. I need one of those. <laughs> Rick Porcello, 71 pitches, 30 of them in the fifth inning. Escobar Harper Worth. Yunel Escobar goes up hacking and into right center for Mookie Betts. Nats box. One hit in the first and Escobar bloop. Two runs in the fifth. Zimmer in a long leadoff homer dead center. Clint Robinson almost homer to the same spot. He got a triple and he was brought in on the second out of that inning on a Danny Espinosa ground ball. That's it. Bryce Harper struck out swinging last time after the long fly ball pulled in by Betts on the edge of the Red Sox bullpen, deep right center. It's amazing to me what they've done to this ballpark. When I think of coming here for the first time in the mid 80s, there was no upper deck where those scoreboards are. That was the roof. This structure we're sitting in wasn't here. The bleachers looked like that. There were no seats on top of the Green Monster back then. The capacity of this ballpark was like 31,000. That's a good play by Pedroia up the middle, getting Bryce Harper. And a good stretch by Napoli on the other end. Wrigley Field way behind the times in terms of renovating like Fenway did, but Wrigley Field is catching up. They added those green monster seats years ago. They went straight up from the single deck, lower deck, and they've made this into a just an amazing place. Played left field three games here in interleague play at the Expos, and my son was two at the time. After the every game, he said, "Dad, was it scary out there by the monster?" <laughs> Some would say yes. <laughs> it was. Got rained out for BP for three days. Didn't have a chance to practice anything. Just go stand out there. It, it's so weird when you see it on TV compared to when you're here. How close that thing is. And then when you're playing left field, you feel like you're playing shortstop. The reference point between your vision and the back of the shortstop's jersey, you feel like you're claustrophobic and you're playing too close. And you go back on routine fly balls that you catch your whole life and they hit halfway up the wall. Worth, that ball stays fair. Leon pounces on it, makes a one hop throw, and Napoli somehow gloves it cleanly. So the Red Sox, two more good defensive plays in that inning. Yeah, they've outplayed the Nats today, no doubt about that.
Heads into the bottom of the sixth inning. He can join us at Nats Park on Sunday, April 19th. It's kids opening day. So, everybody, get to the ballpark. Especially if you're a kid, you get your face painted, you get balloon artists, mascot games. Is that when they tie the balloons together and make, like, dogs and cats and airplanes out of it? Kids can run the bases. For more information, to purchase tickets, go to nationals.com right now. Can you do balloon art, Kirk? I don't know, but I think somebody ought to draw the players like they did in Philadelphia up on the oh, scoreboard. That was great. Was Cody Ashy the funniest thing? Yeah, I almost fell out of the booth. That was good. Curveball in there. David Ortiz, bottom of the sixth. He's one for three with an RBI line drive back in the first inning. On a single, double play ball, fly ball since. You know, it might be funnier is if they had adults draw pictures of the players and put them on the board. Because <laughs> I know my skills would be laughable. You know that David Ortiz was once a player to be named later. Signed with Seattle at the age of 17 in 92. Four years later, the player to be named later in a deal for a guy who was going pretty good at that time. Big strong switch hitting infielder by the name of Dave Hollins. Will put up some big numbers with Minnesota later the Phillies. And then he signed here as a free agent in 03. And, and now he runs this town with Tom Brady. Well, Brady, Belichick, Mr. Kraft, and David Ortiz all out there involved in the first pitch today. That was something. I just saw all those Super Bowl trophies and it made me wonder how many of those things do they make? Yeah. Or does the club maybe make their own and give one to each guy? Because Brady had one, Robert Kraft had one, Bill Belichick had one. Yeah, we were speculating that everybody gets a Vince Lombardi trophy on the winning team. But they have one a bunch, so maybe yeah. that was just the different years. That ball is gashed. Left center. Look at where it leaves this ballpark. 379. And about 40 feet high over the top of that. Nice catch by that lefty, too. David Ortiz, second of the year, 468th of his career. Yeah, he's a rock star in this town, Carp, and watch where this one goes. I mean, not a bad pitch right where he wanted it, but Ortiz looking in that zone. And when he's going that way, that first sack flyer, that bullet, I should say, for a hit over <laughs> the head of Jason Wurst's head was hit. That one crushed. Nice catch. Greatest play in that kid's life. Opening day souvenir. You caught Big Poppy's home run. I love oh. that. That's 39 years old doing that. Here's Hanley Ramirez. And it's nine to two Red Sox. And that wasn't a Fenway home run. That ball's a home run anywhere. I'm just thinking in our ballpark that had been up way up into the red. Seats and not that short of the red porch. Metro's about to be famous for that catch. Think he thought he'd get a fly ball when he brought his glove to that seat today. Three balls, one strike. Tanner Roark to Hanley Ramirez. One of his friends explaining it on the cell phone. Ricocheted right into his glove. Of course, now all those teachers know he skipped school today, but that's all right. I think that's okay here. I don't know. On the winter they had, what's spring break here? The middle of June? I don't know. I don't know. Tanner Roark with a walk, and he'll face Pablo Sandoval. We got Sandoval and a grounder. The Red Sox box, where do you start? I guess Mookie Betts scored two runs, drove in four today. He has stolen two bases on the same play. Near Sandoval. I mean, they're number nine hitters, three for three, Sandy Leon. Oh, 
And they're taking some kind of swing. Well, that's a good lineup. I mean, this is not an easy lineup to work through. We talk about the Blue Jays being a favorite in the American League East. Baltimore always there. But I would not want to pitch against this lineup. This is solid. That was a changeup. And he just kept his hands back, hit it hard up the middle. And now the Red Sox have three consecutive men either rounding the bases or on base. We talked about the approach, keeping your hands inside the ball, thinking about the middle the other way. Swing by Sandoval. Start to wonder how many bullets Tanner Roark has in him. Pitch number 56 coming. Here's Mike Napoli. One for three with a blue base hit. The one that fell out there between Taylor and Worth back in the third inning. Breaking ball and a check swing. Espinosa charges, shovels to Desmond to get the middle runner for the second out. Pablo Sandoval went in there hard. That got the attention of Ian Desmond. Steven Strasburg tomorrow night. That's a six o'clock game against Justin Masterson, who's pitched twice in his career against the Nats, one start. And then Gio and Wade Miley. On Wednesday, that's another day game. And then the Phillies come in for four. Make a note of our one o'clock Saturday game time. Johnny and Ray before and after every game here on Masson. Remember Carlos Gomez went in hard to Ian Desmond, and it was a game that was out of reach, and Ian Desmond took offense. Yeah. Almost Sandoval's playing hard right here, but look at that slide. And that definitely got the attention of an at shortstop, maybe even the dugout. And it's good hard baseball, but it wasn't going to be a double play. That was just a force out, and he slid late and passed the bag. I'm all for breaking up double plays hard to a 9 2 game, but that wasn't a double play. Good fastball by Tanner Roark at 91 for Shane Victorino. Who has bounced out to third, popped to second, fly to left. And remember, he wasn't happy getting drilled by that slider last time up, or yeah. Maybe that had something to do with it too. But it was a slider. That's a breaking ball. Big hop over to third. Escobar to Espinosa. So the Nats take care of that. Red Sox get a run on the Ortiz. Long, long home run.
wife's birthday, don't you? He hits her a home run. So it's time for Yellowwood bringing the lumber. It's Heather Zimmerman's birthday today. And what does Ryan do? He goes up there and gives her the best present a husband can. A home run straight away center field. And my partner speechless. I'm just thinking jewelry, <laughs> flowers. Nah, let's give her a baseball. Homer. Baseball wives understand. Happy birthday, Heather. What a great lady. What a great gentleman. And Ryan Zimmerman's one for two. Breaking ball sitting upstairs. So Ryan's last five at bats. Single walk. Home run included. Actually his last six bats at bats now. And Porcello pours one in. He's still working on about 80 pitches here with the seventh inning getting underway. Ooh, curveball hanging up and in. Same spot. Three and one. Ryan seeing the ball well. Just think of that. That's to the outside edge. Good fastball. By the 26 year old right hander. He's trying to win a 77th big league game. 182nd start. First time he's ever faced the Nets. Zimmerman got a fastball left side cut off by Sandoval took a couple of crow hops and then throws it into the camera bay. We'll see if it's a hit and an error or a straight two base error. Ryan Zimmerman was near the bag when the throw got there. You know as a third baseman you're supposed to cut off the shortstop if you can but when you're this extended and you get that weird of a hop. That play was just kind of disastrous from the beginning for Pablo. You see him kind of double clutch right there and then launch one. Almost taking somebody out down there. Who was that ducking for cover? Like I said uh, earlier, if you missed it, this isn't a game that's going to make you want to go to Sports Authority and buy a glove. Yeah. They haven't posted a hit for Zimmerman, just the error. So evidently a two base error on Pablo. He got all a lot of rhythm when he couldn't get that ball out of his glove the first time. Clint Robinson, long triple to the top of the center field wall last time up. Ball two strikes. And to the right side, that'll advance the runner. Zimmerman to third base, one out. Ian Desmond, another RBI chance. Last time with the runner at third, one out, he lined out softly to second. It's about time for Ian Desmond to collect that first RBI, get things back. In order and take it from there. He is off to a three for 24 start. There's a chopper that'll bring in a run. Bogarts throws him out. 9 3 score now. Jose Lobaton with two down here right before the stretch. Driving a run, even if it's a nine to two game, high fives around. I like it. And 
three game. It's good. I mean, I like what I just saw. You can't just be on the top step, rah rah, cheer cheer when things are going good. You have to stay together when things aren't going good. And so to see guys at the top step high five and Zimmerman still high five and Ian Desmond for driving in a run. No panic. Yeah little things are important no matter what the score is. But yeah you'd love to have a two run homer there but. That approach will serve Ian and the Nats well at some future time. I mean. You're seven games into a season there's no need to panic. Do things have to change absolutely are things going to change absolutely. It's just not what you thought was going to happen in the first week of the season. It'll change. I promise you things will change. But you stay together. You don't panic. You don't get tight. You don't start having too many meetings. And they're not. They'll be fine. Good change up by Porcello. Still dealing with two outs here in the seventh inning. They're too good not to be fun. He could go eight today to help out his ball club and his bullpen. Lobatone takes strike three in the seventh inning. Top half is over. The Nats pick up an unearned run. That was Porcello's fifth K. And we arrive at the Hyundai seventh inning stretch at what they call America's most beloved ballpark. Nine three Sox. Highlights, and if you're just getting home from work and you missed it, you were lucky. What a lot of good defense being played here today. Some miscommunications in the outfield, maybe some wind and the ball lost to the sun. This one, somebody has to take charge. And on the road, when the fans are screaming, a lot of times outfielders will use arm actions where they put their hand up if they got it. Didn't look like anybody was talking on that fly ball to right. And it all just kind of unraveled so quickly. And their plays that have to be made at the highest level, they weren't today, and the score reflects it. Nine to three Red Sox as this one moves into the bottom of seven. And Aaron Barrett will get some work here. The Bear pitched a scoreless ninth with a couple of strikeouts yesterday. Striking out Cameron Rupp and Darren Rupp before getting a ground ball against Ben Revere, keeping that game. Tied so the Nats could go ahead and win it with two in the tenth. Reed Johnson will give Jason Worth the rest of the day off. That's a good call at this point of the game. When you're down by six. That fourth game of the year for Eric Bear, like you said, he was lights out yesterday. Anytime you take the mound in a big league game, everybody watching. Throw strikes and have a chance to show that maybe you're the seventh end guy. Tanner Roark gets three and two thirds for the Nats and kept this thing sane for a while. He did give up five hits, but only one run 
on the homer by David Ortiz. So a solid job by Tanner Roark. Toyota case for kids every time a Nats pitcher strikes out an opposing batter. It's $37 to the Children's Inn, the National Institutes of Health, thanks to our Washington area Toyota dealers. Roark, by the way, 59 pitches, 34 strikes in that outing. Did a nice job. Hanley, uh, pardon me, Xander Bogarts, not Hanley Ramirez, leading off, right handed batter, bottom of the seventh. I was looking at the matchup sheet Ramirez and Sandoval, the only two guys on the Red Sox roster who have faced Aaron Barrett before. Bogarts has had a good day with two runs and RBI, two hits. He is 13 for 30 to start the season. That's a guy batting eighth in this potent lineup. He's 22 years of age. And by the way, I mentioned earlier his twin brother, Jair, the Boston minor league first baseman. He's the kid who got traded to Boston from the Cubs as the player to be named later for sending Theo Epstein. Really? Or Theo Epstein from Boston to Chicago. Remember the old uh, yeah. player compensation? That was Xander Bogart's brother, Jair. On a 3 0 pitch, well inside for the leadoff walk. Injury update, hopefully a recovery update from Dan. Yeah, Bob, how about a little bit of positive news with the Nationals trailing by six? Anthony Rendon is starting to make some progress. He threw out to 100 feet yesterday with no issue in that knee, which has been bugging him for weeks now. He took some dry swings and some swings off the tee, uh, a tee also with no issue. He's doing some rotational movements, some side to side stuff, which had really been bothering him, and he's feeling better. So continuing to make progress there. Denard Spann played seven innings in a minor league game, tripled, tried to steal a base. Obviously, great signs that the burst is there. He's going to head out on a minor league re have assignments soon head to an affiliate and he, he looks like he's on track guys to maybe rejoin the Nationals within a couple weeks if all goes well. Well that's great news. Thank you Dan. Hadn't heard a whole lot about you know the process with Anthony. I know you know there were the opinions by the doctors and kind of shutting things down for a while but good to hear that he's at least active and doing baseball activities. Well, when I said things are going to get better I promise you know, we get Tony two bags back at Denard in center field. Get the club together and then learn how to play as a team together is going to take a second after you get your guys back. And it's not like you're just going to plug in pieces to a video game and all of a sudden go on a 10 game winning streak. You know, there's new parts to this puzzle that have to kind of gel together. That's going to take a second. But that's why you play for six months. This isn't you know, a one month season. Things are going to be okay. Sandy Leone is three for three. Used to catch Aaron Barrett, knows his stuff, knows that wicked slider. And I wouldn't be surprised if Anthony Rendon plays second when he comes back and Escobar stays at third. That would be interesting. Because you have a guy that would have to learn second base in the course of a season that hasn't played there a whole lot. Zimmerman charges it. Nice throw. Desmond to Barrett. That's about as good looking as a 3 6 1 double play can be. Great rhythm. Started by Ryan Zimmerman. Yeah, nicely done. And there's been some good plays after the ones we showed you today. So it just goes to show you, you, you know, you turn the page and you get it done. A little two step there by Aaron Barrett at the end to get the bag. But just complete my thought, Carp. You know, it, it's hard to learn second base if you're Yunel Escobar in the course of a season. And the way the infield defense has been so far. I mean, you already have a guy like Rendon that has shown established that he can play a good second base. So now you only have one guy out of position. And third's a little bit easier to learn, I guess, than second base in the course of the season. So I wouldn't be surprised if Anthony Rendon plays second and Escobar stays at third. Yeah, Dan uh, telling us that the only concern about that would be maybe runners coming in from the blind side at second base on Rendon. But 
you know, as you said, Anthony has handled himself over there before. He knows how to clear himself yeah. and stay away from base runners. And, and Escobar didn't look too comfortable at second in spring training, the small amount I saw. Yeah, at least now he's all over on the familiar side of the infield. Angles different than they are at short, but nothing like the difference between short and second. 0 oh, 2 and Barrett gets a check swing. Walk, double play, strikeout. And Aaron Barrett gets this game into the eighth inning. Espinosa, Taylor, Escobar straight ahead. Took care of David Wright's bat right there. Lost his first start against the Mets. Three earned runs in five and a third. But he won June 8th here at Fenway. Justin Masterson. The Nats have seen him in the past with Cleveland. And he won his debut with the Red Sox. Coverage begins at 5.30 p.m. Nats extra on Masson. Steven Strasburg. Text Masson's word of the day. It's passion. So 29292 for your chance to win a meet and greet with Matt Williams presented by Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield who encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Passion. Yeah. Well that's rah rah. There you go. And that was <laughs> fairly creepy. Not gonna lie. <laughs> uh. Danny Espinosa, RBI grounder, 0 for 2. <laughs> I can see it online now, creepy carp. <laughs> It'll take about 38 seconds. No, no. That spins are worried about other things right now, I believe. But don't worry, folks. FP promised us. Yep. O2 to Danny. Marcelo still dealing here. Pitch count 95 with 62 strikes into the eighth inning. He has sure saved their bullpen after that marathon in New York, and there's Xavier Cedeno for the Nats. That means to me that Matt Williams thinks he'll need Aaron Barrett again in the series and 12 pitches today enough and get the X man out there. But right now, I think, in my opinion, is when a manager earns his money. You know, anybody can be a great skipper when it's sunny out. But when it's a little bit cloudy and things aren't going your way and guys are looking toward you, that's when you win your money. Yeah. You know, how Matt Williams reacts to this start, I think, going to be a key to the rest of the way. And if I know him like I think I know him, he's not going to overreact. Well, and you talked about this when Davey Johnson was running our ball club. 
The way you handle a bad game today with tomorrow in mind can really, you know, make some things happen then because Davey would know how to shut certain things down and rev them up for the next day. Yeah, you, I mean, you can still win this series. I mean, that's what leadership is about. How do you react when things are going the exact opposite? Danny Espinosa hits one long to right, and that is out of here. Not sure which bullpen it ended up in. It was right at the wall, and Danny Espinosa hits his first homer of the year, getting his second RBI today. And that's a pretty good blast to that part of Fenway. That's about 390 out there. I mean, all along, he keeps saying that he's a better hitter left handed than he is right handed. The experiment in spring training where, you know, he went straight right, didn't feel quite comfortable with it, didn't feel like it was something he wanted to do during the season and even getting back to my point about Matt Williams he wants his guys to be comfortable he said okay you want to switch hit switch hit. I'll tell you and that double in Philadelphia and this. Hmm. Let's take out the swing one more time first home run of the year for Danny Espinosa and it was on an off speed pitch down the zone just dug it out and wrote it out of here. That was sweet. And I, I think it, you have to tip your cap and admire the confidence that he has in his left handed swing after all the trials he's had on that side of the plate. If he believes it well yeah okay. But you have to show us and he has so far. That was Danny's 56th career home run. And this ball will back up Pablo Sandoval. He will throw out Michael Taylor who's 0 for 4 today. And Michael Taylor now 0 for his last eight. Escobar and Harper the next two here in the eighth. Red Sox start to get somebody throwing in their bullpen. They'd like Porcello to get two more outs get this one to the ninth. And their bullpen will get a day off. For the most part. Escobar one for three today with a base hit back in the first. <laughs> Jammed a flare to right center. Right there to grab it. Mookie bets. Two outs. How about T-Mobile game changer? We're going to go all the way back to the first inning. Bryce Harper getting on top of a Rick Porcello fastball. You thought it might get into the bullpen. A little foreshadowing there of Mookie Betts' amazing day. Robs Bryce Harper of a homer. He would walk, steal a couple of bases, and score. Then hit a three-run homer. Then a single. And Mookie Betts has been the best player on the field here today. Harper chopping one Bryce 0 for 3. And how about Porcello on a bullpen that's just been overloaded early in the season with all the innings. The Red Sox have played going out there and yeah, giving everybody a blow. He went six innings his first time out against the Phillies last week. Gave up three runs, struck out four, walked two. Marathon man today. Harper strikes out. Top of the eighth is over. Six K's for Porcello. Nine four Red Sox.
Baseball free on DraftKings.com. Enter promo code DUGOUT for free entry. 94 as we head into the bottom of the eighth inning. You're looking at Nats trainer Steve Gober, who's going to catch a lot of heck for me putting him on camera here. But he wanted to give a shout out to his grandfather, Steve Gober, as well from Northampton, Pennsylvania, World War II vet. He's an enormous Red Sox fan, Carp. He's 89 years old. And he said after the Red Sox won the World Series, it's okay now, I can die. Never thought I would see this. And he's a proud grandfather of seven, great grandfather of five. And Steve wanted to give his grandfather a shout out today. And I thought it was cool. Very nice. How many Red Sox fans said that after they won this World Series? They thought they would never see it. The curse of the Bambino went away. And all they've done is gone out and won it two more times in seven and 13. Right. Mazda do ups, you saw him. Pedroia, Ortiz, and Ramirez against Xavier Cedeno. Dustin Pedroia, one for three, single sack fly. Sox are doing quite well. They're about to go five and two unless they that stage a dramatic comeback here. They don't have a save in their bullpen yet. They've won a bunch of games in lopsided fashion. Well, they've had a lot of interleague games. Took two out of three at Philadelphia. Then they go to New York and play their arch rivals, and now they're right home in interleague again. Fifth game for Xavier Cedeno. Three one count. Pedroia walks. David Ortiz, I'm still marveling at where he hit this ball two innings ago. Well, Tanner Roark had a great outing. And I don't even want to say he made a mistake right there. You know, good hitters beat good pitches sometimes. He hit his location, threw it right where he wanted. It just happened that Big Poppy was looking in the same spot. Active leaders and home runs. Only Pooh Holes and A Rod have more. So he's a cinch for 500. That's Jeep taking us inside the numbers. The Hall of Famer. I think the numbers are going to be too big to ignore. Yeah, he's got to go. DHs have a rough time getting I in know, there. Edgar Martinez. Comes to mind immediately. I used to be kind of uh, DH, yeah, but when you see guys at their age still putting up the numbers they do, I mean, it's not like it's easy to hit and you just sit around and take four at bats. I mean, they studied the game, they studied their at bats, they have to keep themselves in the game. That's a one hopper to Espinosa. Danny thought that Pedroia was probably running, or he could have engineered him. Maybe a 4 1 6 double play there, but he's on the move and things are happening fast. Celebrate opening weekend with our buddies, the defending Carolina League champions, Potomac Nationals. That's through Wednesday. So we've had replica championship rings. Fireworks, hot dogs for a buck, dollar tickets, t shirts, 703 590 2311, or potomacnationals.com. My only argument to the DH getting the Hall of Fame thing is the longevity I understand. But you put a lot of miles on your car playing defense, diving around, running into walls, you know, guys sliding into you on double plays. You're running into teammates for pop ups when you don't communicate, right? So the fact that, you know, you just roll out and hit four times every night, he's fantastic at that, and that's allowed him to play longer. And you know, he's using the DH to his advantage to make a lot of money and to put up some numbers. But yeah, that's a good debate. Playing defense is hard. It's a debate where you know which way purists want to go. And by the way, that hitting coach of theirs, Chili Davis, put up some great numbers in his career. He did. 
He had 350 homers and drove in 1,372. Hanley Ramirez. 0 for 2 hit by a pitch, a run scored, and a walk. That was a check swing. The ball hit Lobatone, came up and hit the bat, and then laid there. So I guess even though it's a strike, they might have to call it a wild pitch. The runner was not running on the pitch. See, Lobatone couldn't find it. It came up and hit. Ramirez bat after it hit the catcher. And here the communication front, front, front. Seven missing. Counts even two two. Ramirez took a hard swing, and that one really got it. See we're going. Watching. Back foot, huh? Mm. I don't see that very often. He's really hurt. So the counts two and two with one out here in the eighth. Let's see if they throw the same pitch in the same spot. Pitchers have been known to do that. Catchers have been known to call it. That one bounces, goes straight up in the air over Lobatone. So in this inning, we've had a, a walk and two wild pitches. Jose's taking a beating right now. Another ball in the dirt. He just took one off his right forearm, and did that one get him on the meat hand? So Hanley Ramirez down. Let's see if he gets pinch run for. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, that's going to do it for Ramirez. Wonder what? He's limping around pretty good.
that Daniel Nava? It is. So runners at the corners, one out. And Sandoval from the right side, and that ball bounces out in front of home plate. That's blocking practice right now for Jose Lobaton. Yeah. A good block saving a run, but eventually you're going to have to throw one all the way there. And we'll clean up our Manny Gonzalez, making sure Jose Lobatones are okay as they stroll back together. Pablo Sandoval, two for three, hit by a pitch back in the third, a run scored. And he's 0 for 11 right handed this year. Busted bat, Espinosa at the last moment up to get it. He thought it jinxed it. <laughs> Came close. Two outs. Mike Napoli will be next. Shards of the bat around the infield. Pablo's one of those guys that could think about hitting straight left handed. Daniel Nava used to be a switch hitter. He's hitting straight left this year for the Red Sox. Shane Victorino used to be a switch hitter. He's hitting right handed only, as for the last few years. And Pablo Sandoval, his numbers are so different from left handed to right handed. Yeah. That's something he could think about here. Here's Mike Napoli. He's one for four. Nationals in the ninth. Worth Zimmerman. Actually, Worth out of the ball game. So Reed Johnson, Zimmerman, and Clint Robinson. Mercedes Benz will track it. Xavier Cedeno's pitched in three of the last four games on this trip. Good changeup. And really, all in all, Roark, Barrett, and Cedeno did a lot in a kind of a blowout game today that might help the pen and the staff for the rest of this series.
to the top of the ninth. The Nationals are down by five in what was once an eight nothing game. And this is Junichi Tazawa, 28 year old right hander from Japan, born in Yokohama. He's been part of the Red Sox staff off and on for the last five years. Yeah, three pitch guy, fastball, curveball, split, fastball. Pretty good one, averaging 94 miles an hour this year. Well, load him up and see what happens. You never know. Porcello going eight on 112 pitches. He gave the Nets four runs, three earned. Washington just four hits today. Four runs, the most the Nats have scored in any game this year. He's got a little hesitation to that delivery before he explodes right toward you. Reed Johnson in left field now. He's off to a two for seven start with an RBI. Whoa, that ball really squirts into the seats. Over by the dugout. There's no screen over there. The screen here at Fenway probably as small width-wise as any in baseball. Ben Dendecker sent to Syracuse when Jason Worth was reactivated. So it's the veteran guys like Reed Johnson and Dan Ugla. Staying with the ball club and hopefully providing some of that veteran production off the bench. I always had trouble with those guys with that little hesitation move because as a hitter, it's kind of hard to tell when you start your stride and get going. That's why you see a few pitches when you go up there against a guy with some sort of deception in his delivery. Time him up in the on deck circle, too. That ball bounces out in front of home plate. Red Sox trying to go five and two. Started the day tied with Toronto. Blue Jays hosting the Rays up in Canada tonight. The Nats will see Toronto at Nationals Park later this year as we make our way through the American League East interleague. Swing and a foul tip on a nasty breaking ball. One out. Nissan will track it. Yeah, he went 3 2 split right there, 85 miles an hour. Tomorrow night, Steven Strasburg for the Nets. It's a 6 o'clock game. He'll face the Red Sox' Justin Masterson. Ryan Zimmerman looks at 94 on the corner. I saw Masterson a few years ago in Cleveland. Yeah. He had that big sweeping slider, three quarter release. Was a mid 90s fastball. I don't think he throws as hard as he used to. Yeah, kind of odd. He left there, made a stop in St. Louis. Now with Boston, he looked like he was going to be a guy on that Cleveland staff for quite a while. I want to say that he matched up against Strasburg, too. Seems to me that was a Saturday night game in Cleveland yeah. when we were there a couple of years ago. Memories flooding back. One ball, one strike. It's kind of weird. The Nats were here three years ago. Red Sox haven't been in Washington since 09. We were here in 06. 
So three out of four times the teams have met have been here at Fenway. Home and home with the Yankees this year home and home with the Rays. The usual home and home with the Orioles expanded to three and three this year. Special time for the Mid Atlantic Sports Report tomorrow, 4 to 5 30, because of Nats Extra at 5 30. Tom Davis, Jim Duquette, Dave Johnson, Phil Wood, wall to wall coverage of the Nats. Well, if you're too. If 3 2 split to Reed Johnson, and you throw it here to Ryan Zimmerman. Not always associated as a pitch from righty to righty, but when you got this kind of action. Ryan gets around late. It's off the gear of Sandy Leon and Zimmerman hanging tough on a full count here in the ninth. That split to try to sneak that fastball by. Trying to lull you to sleep with that split finger and sneak 94 in there. Hey, Johnny Holiday asked Ray Knight how he did at Fenway Park if he ever played here. Early play, not really around back then. I don't know if Ray played any. Maybe for the Orioles, played here. That's extra. Johnny and Ray when this one's over. Ryan Zimmerman getting his Fenway hacks here. Well, his timing's getting there. You remember in the Philly series, they were throwing him away and he was having trouble with the outside pitch. But, you know, he's got a lot going on in his swing, and it looks like he's starting to feel more comfortable. Down he goes. Ryan Zimmerman, tough at bat, hung in there, takes the one out walk here in the ninth. <laughs> kind of leaning out there for that split, and then he got the fastball, just ran up right around his head. Look out. Turning away instinctively like you're supposed to, but man, that was neat. My bad. One on one out, Clint Robinson. This guy gets some good swings. Struck out looking in the second. The two feet away from a homer triple in the fifth. And then a ground ball to the right side in the seventh inning. Off speed pitch. You'd think Matt Williams probably DH Clint Robinson again tomorrow, but you never know. He might try to shake it up. And the 0-2 again. Clint Robinson stays with it.
born in Jefferson City, Missouri, the state capital. Went to high school in Alabama. Went to college at Troy University in Alabama. And at the age of 30, getting his first real taste of big league hitting. That ball skips. Eighteen no shows today. Crowd of thirty seven thousand two hundred and three. They list the day capacity as thirty seven two twenty one. Robinson on that pitch diving down and away. That's the splitter again. Pretty nasty. That might just been a good old fashioned sinker at eighty seven. The split sometimes goes straight down. That one just had some late run to it. No, it's a split. You call the cart unless he changed the grip late. That one just he got inside of it. Action. That was nasty. Ian Desmond 0 for 3 RBI grounder last time. Nationals about to fall to 2 and 5. It would become a 1 and 3 road trip with Strasburg and Geo left to change that. Now 37,203 what's left of them on their feet. Sandy Leon wanted that ball up but it ended up up and away. 71 games for the Red Sox each of the last two years for this right hander. He's had some good ERAs. Career 327 coming in. And the Nats have had to grind out some at bats against him here in the ninth inning. Badman. Ball game just over three hours old now. Now it's over. Three hours and one minute for the Red Sox to score often and early and hammer the Nationals nine to four. Rough day for Jordan Zimmerman. Mookie Betts was amazing for the Red Sox today. And Washington is two and five.